The Putt Portfolio with Andy McNeil. Hey, welcome to the Puck Portfolio. My name is Andy McNeil. I'm here on weekdays to provide NHL projections, picks, betting advice, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season. This show is presented by Canada Sports Betting. You can check out canadasportsbetting.ca for all your sports betting needs in Canada, obviously. We have eight games on the docket for Monday, April 1st. You won't get any April Fool's jokes here. I don't do that shit. So, uh, I'll, I'll business on this Monday, April Fool's Day. We'll look ahead to Tuesday's NHL games. We've got another eight games on, on the schedule for Tuesday. And speaking of which, let's do a little bit of a, a schedule breakdown here for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because we've got some teams playing back-to-back on Monday and Tuesday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, every team has had one day off heading into the games on april 1st so no rest missed matches to report on for today's slate uh but as far as tuesday goes we've got a a few teams playing uh, back to back after playing on monday and uh, and then again on wednesday some of the teams that will be in action on tuesday will be in action again on wednesday so the rest column tells you how many days rest teams have across the league the load column Gives you a little bit more context, tells you whether a team is playing back to back, three games and four nights, etc. So you can take a screenshot of this, have a little bit of a look at that later. But you can also head over to CanadaSportsBetting.ca and check out uh, the weekly breakdown of the NHL schedule. I just tweeted about it a little while uh, a little while ago at Digital Gambler on Twitter, and uh, and that breaks down all the rest mismatches. For every game in the NHL, Monday to Sunday. So you can get a head start on your handicapping with that. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the projections for Monday and Tuesday. Uh, We've got the Panthers in Toronto taking on the Maple Leafs. A rematch of last year's series that I'm sure Toronto fans will, uh, will want to forget. But they'll be getting a, a good reminder when they face off against Sergei Bobrovsky, who was their kryptonite in last year's playoffs. Uh, the Panthers, they are on the first half of a back-to-back here. They're going to play uh, the Canadians on Tuesday. Uh, Toronto, they're going to ice the same lineup that beat Buffalo 3-0 on Saturday. So that means Ilya Samsonov will be in goal. Uh, Mitch Marner, he is eligible to return to the lineup, but he won't play on Monday. Uh, he could return Wednesday against the Lightning, though. Same goes for Morgan Riley. He's progressing, nearing a return. Um, I think, you know, the line is as high as it should be, probably higher than it should be on the Florida Panthers. Uh, they're up around minus 130 now on the money line. My model has this one, uh, plus 109 uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, minus 109 for the Florida Panthers. So, Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of a similar situation to what we saw when the Oilers visited the Maple Leafs uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Edmonton, you know, they were the team that everybody wanted to bet on, but Toronto kind of shocked everybody. So while I don't think the Maple Leafs are a good bet at plus 110, um, you know, if it gets any higher than that, it's Toronto or nothing for me. Florida has been, they've been struggling a little bit lately and, uh, and, It'll be interesting to see how they, whether or not they clean things up down the stretch here. Of course, uh, teams have roughly nine games left on the schedule. That seems to be the sort of the average. Um, and uh, and the Panthers don't have a lot of time to clean things up. So it'll be interesting to see how they, they do against the Maple Leafs on Monday. But um, yeah, it's Toronto or nothing for me. Uh, the only bet that I like on Monday at the current odds is the Philadelphia Flyers. They are good to minus 120 so i like the flyers at minus 120 or better um they are in action against the islanders we've got simian varlamov starting on monday for the islanders uh they're going to host the chicago blackhawks on tuesday so it sounds like Ilya sorokin will be starting in that game Uh, samuel urson is going to start for the flyers davy drysdale's making his return to the flyers blue line he's missed more than a month's worth of action uh, forwards Cam Atkinson and Garnet Hathaway. They're also drawing back into the Flyers lineup. Uh, Philly, they're in danger of playing, uh, falling out of the playoff picture. 
after they were leapfrogged by the Capitals over the weekend. The current playoff odds look like this. Washington, 85% chance. The Philadelphia Flyers, 65% chance. Detroit, 29%. Islanders, 16%. New Jersey, 3%. Pittsburgh, 3%. And Buffalo, 0%. Probably not exactly zero, but, you know, round down, right? Still, I like the Flyers at minus 120 or better to win half a unit. Um, we've got the Kings and the Jets. And earlier this morning, it was announced that uh, it'll be backup Laurent Brassois in goal Monday against the Kings, not Connor Hellebuck. Uh, the odds have shifted to Los Angeles uh, or in Los Angeles direction as a result. Not surprising there. The Kings down around even money. Uh, Rick Bonus said that Tyler Toffoli is going to be a game time decision. So things could shift a little bit further uh, in the Kings direction. Winnipeg, they've lost six in a row. They've got two home games left, including this one, to salvage some points before they head back out on the road for four games. Uh, I think this one is, you know, virtually a 50-50 matchup. If the Foley doesn't play, that'll make the Kings a small favorite. Uh, Edmonton, they're in action against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, the Blues have played the Oilers twice. They've gone one and one straight up. They lost in overtime uh, about a month ago in Edmonton, Jordan Bennington is expected to start for St. Louis. Stuart Skinner will start for Edmonton. Um, the Oilers, I think they're a little bit bigger of a favorite than they should be, but um, not enough value to justify betting on the St. Louis Blues. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to Seattle at San Jose, but look, the Sharks, they shut out the Blues on Saturday for just their 17th win of the season. Uh, and surprisingly, it wasn't their first shutout win of the year. They blanked the Seattle Kraken 2-0 back on January 30th. So uh, maybe they've got a shot against the Kraken. I've talked about how bad of a, a money line favorite the Kraken have been at home. Uh, that's not necessarily the case when they're a big favorite like they are in this game. But uh, still not a team I would be interested in backing in a spot like this. Um, so yeah, just one play for Monday's NHL action, the Flyers minus 120 or better to win half unit. I believe the minus 120 is still available at bet three, six, five. So you can check that out there, but shop around. You might find a slightly better price uh, at a sports book like pinnacle, um, Tuesday, April 2nd. We'll get into this right now. We've got the penguins, uh, in New Jersey. Of course, the penguins are in action against the Rangers on Monday. New Jersey has had three days off. Uh, the Devils, they're going to be in action again on Wednesday, though. So this is the first half of a back-to-back. -back. They'll play the Rangers on Wednesday in New York. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think the Devils deserve to be a somewhat sizable favorite here, especially with the, the rest advantage um, up in, you know, and I'm seeing Pittsburgh up around the plus 142 range. I don't think there's any value there. Um, probably going to be a game that I don't bet on, but, um, you know, could be uh, one that I would get interested in if the Penguins become a bigger underdog. I don't think that's going to happen, though. If anything, I think things will move toward the Penguins, but we'll see. Uh, the one game that I do have interest in for Tuesday at the current odds, so we're seeing plus 114 and plus 115 at DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, those are some pretty attractive prices on the Washington Capitals. We know that Uko Pekalukin is expected to start on Tuesday versus Washington. Uh, but assuming Charlie Lindgren gets the start, and I am assuming that he will be in goal because this is the first game of three days in or three games in four days for Washington. They've got a back to back against Pittsburgh and Carolina on Wednesday and Thursday. Kemper should get one of those starts. I'm betting that he will. So I think with Lindgren in goal on Tuesday against Buffalo, there's enough value on Washington at plus 114 or plus 115 uh, to justify a one unit bet on the Capitals. So lock that one in. I think that's a really good bet for Tuesday. I don't know why there is any uncertainty about Washington's goaltending situation. Lindgren has to be the guy in this game to kind of put the Sabres out of it. And, uh, and then they can, you know, they can feed Kemper to the Carolina Hurricanes uh, maybe like they did the last time when uh, when Lindgren had to come in in relief and help the Caps get the shootout win. So Washington plus 114, plus 115. I like them at that price, and uh, I think that's good for a one-unit bet. So with uh, with Bobrovsky starting on uh, on Monday in Toronto, that means we should expect to see uh, Stolarz in goal against the Canadians on Tuesday. 
Um, I think that Florida should be about a minus 180 road favorite as a result. Could be some value on the Montreal Canadiens um, at some point. Doesn't look to be the case now uh, at the current odds, but I uh, I wouldn't be surprised if things trended that way. And, uh, and I wouldn't feel good about making that bet because uh, they are going to be outmatched. I know they have been, uh, they've been, you know, playing pretty well lately. Uh, Jake can attest to that, but he saw firsthand, uh, you know, what Montreal is going to more, more often than not, the, the result they're going to produce against a team of, uh, of the Florida Panthers zilt. They hosted the Carolina Hurricanes on, uh, on Saturday and Jake got a, a firsthand look at a Stanley cup favorite. What did you, uh, what did you think of the way that Carolina took down Montreal on Saturday, Jake? Yeah, I mean they're 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 a suffocating team. They're they're opportunistic. I mean, certainly the Canadians have been opportunistic themselves this year. But uh, yeah, you know the Canadians threw what they could at them in the first period. Uh, eventually, Carolina, you know, getting a shorthanded goal, and that was kind of the backbreaker already. The Canadians played 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 well. All due respect to them for the rest of the game, but you know, Carolina knows kind of kind of how to shut it down and sort of grind out that game. And after that point, it was uh, it was a, it was a bit of a foregone conclusion. Yeah, so the big, I think the big difference here, um, clearly Florida has been one of the most consistent teams this season up until recently. Uh, over the last month, the Panthers ranked 21st five-on-five uh, five expected goal share. Um, not great, right, uh, according to Evolving Hockey. The Hurricanes, they're up in the third spot in that category, uh, and they've got a 60% goal share at five-on-five. Five. The Panthers have just a 52% goal share at five-on-five five over the last 14 games, so... Uh, maybe maybe the door could be opened a little bit for an upset if uh, if Florida isn't at their best on Tuesday versus the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, we've got the Islanders there in action again on Tuesday. They're hosting Chicago, as I mentioned before. I would not lay minus 200 or, or greater on the Islanders with your own money, let alone my own. So uh, I also don't want to bet Arvid Soderblom with your money, let alone my own. So uh, only Chicago. And only if uh, Peter Mrazek is between the pipes. Um, but I won't be locking in anything at this time on the Blackhawks. Uh, Boston and Nashville, interesting matchup. Should be a good one. Uh, I'm still a little bit irked uh, that the Predators found a way to uh, to give up that two-goal lead they had over the, uh, Nash or the Colorado Avalanche on Saturday. Uh, they allowed five unanswered goals after chasing... Uh, Alexander Georgiev, smart move by uh, Jared Bednar to uh, pull Georgiev after that unsportsmanlike penalty and put Justice Anna Noonan in. Uh, he got the job done, and uh, and Colorado had scored the Preds 5 nothing the rest of the way, won the game 7-4. I still like Nashville, though. They are uh, a good team. Um, I think they've played well enough to be you know a 50-50 matchup uh, against the Bruins thanks to home ice advantage, so uh, no play on either side right now. As things stand, um, not a lot of interest in this Ottawa at Minnesota game, but I did kind of think it was funny that uh, Minnesota head coach John Hines took another risk over the weekend, pulling his goalie in overtime again, this time against the Vegas Golden Knights. But uh, but this time the risk, uh, risk didn't work out in his favor, and uh, the Wild didn't even get a point for their efforts. Not that I think it would have mattered. One or two points not going to make a big difference when they're you know, 10 points or more back of the wild card spot. And they're, they've got just nine games remaining in this NHL season. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, they are taking on the Vegas Golden Knights on Tuesday. The first half of a back-to-back, they're going to be in Arizona on Wednesday. Uh, so I'm um, going to uh, keep an eye on this one to see who Vancouver decides to start in goal. Uh, Thatcher Demko, he is eligible to return as early as April 6th. So we won't be seeing him before then. Uh, Elias Lindholm also listed as day to day for the Canucks. So that's something worth monitoring heading into Tuesday's matchup against the Vegas Golden Knights. But that pretty much does it for Monday's episode of the puck portfolio. My favorite bet for Monday is the Philadelphia Flyers at minus 120 or better to win half unit. And, uh, and then I like the Washington Capitals at plus 114. That is a one-unit play, hoping that they can take down the Buffalo Sabres, put an end to the Sabres' playoff hopes, which uh, are already on life support, to say the least. But, yeah, drop a like on the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel. Helps out a ton. We'll see you tomorrow.